believe in God the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and Maker of earth, and in Jesus Christ His only begotten Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate And he was crucified and dead and buried And I believe what I believe Is what makes me what I am and I did not make it No, it is making me It is the very truth of God Not the invention of any was crucified, buried, and dead. He descended into hell and on the third day rose again. And he ascended into heaven where he sits at God's mighty right hand. And I believe he is returning to judge the quick and the dead and the sons of men. And I believe what is what it makes me what I am and I did not make it No, it is making me It is the very truth of God Not the invention of any man And I believe it, I believe it I believe Almighty maker of heaven and maker of earth And in Jesus Christ his only begotten Son our Lord Believe in the Holy Spirit, one holy church The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins I believe in the resurrection I believe in life that never ends And I believe what I believe Is what makes me what I am And I did not make it No, it is making me I did not make it No, it is making me I said I did not make it No, it is making me It is the very truth of God Not the invention of any man I believe it, I believe it I believe it, I believe it Well, welcome this morning to Home Road Church of the Nazarene That was the Apostles' Creed put to music That was uh, written by Rich Mullins many years ago and it's a joy to be able to sing the beliefs of our faith today as we gather together. Well, we welcome you. We are glad that you are here. No matter what kind of a week you may have had, we are grateful to have you here in this place with us this morning. Every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection, and today we are here to celebrate. This morning, we're going to have a reading from the Word of the Lord, and we're going to do this responsively this morning from Psalm 50. So on the screen, it will say reader, and that will be Carol. And then when it says, uh, I believe it says congregation, that will be us reading together. Good morning. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the, of the sun to where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him, and around him a tempest rages.
Gather to me this consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is the word of the Lord, and we are grateful for it this morning. Will you please stand with me, all who who are able today, and we are going to continue in our worship through song today, singing How Great Thou Art.
could see it all made new. We do. Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Sing this out with me. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy, is he worthy of our blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? Yes. Does the Father truly love us? Jesus our Messiah, hold forever those he loved, he died. Is our God intend to dwell again with us? Sing it out, he does, he does. All right, lift your voices loud. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone holy? prayer time this morning, uh, these two fellows, they're getting promoted. They're, they're done with the teen youth group, and it's been a joy and a pleasure having both of them in there. Both of them are so musically talented, and they bring so much to the group. I'm going to miss them, and uh, the group's going to miss them. So just pray that they've, moms and dads, that they've listened a little bit uh, in there so they can take that with them as they go. They also reminded me of the tragic accident that happened a couple of nights ago, uh, not too far from here, over in the Northwestern School District area with uh, at least one person that died on an ATV accident on the road, and a young person. 
this week. There was one in another county. I just seen as, as a youth pastor, you see that these young folks, it just hurts your heart and you just pray that they knew the Lord. And as we talk with these young folks, we let them know you just not guaranteed your next breath. Just come to pray that you know who Christ is and you have him in your life. This week, um, Gary Helderbrand's uh, cousin Randy passed away. We need to keep him in our prayers and that family as well and as their time of mourning. And a lady by the name of Janice Stevenson has passed away as well. And she was the um, a close friend of Rita Whip and uh, sister-in-law to Nancy Jordan. And as I was going through the prayer list this morning, you can get this if you reach out to the Reach out to the church office. You can get this email on a weekly basis. You can stay in tune with all the different events and activities. And more importantly, you get all the different prayer requests. If you could keep my mom in your prayers, um, she's not here today, and uh, she probably wouldn't tell you. I don't think she's watching. She has a small fracture in her back, and uh, she's not going to tell anybody about it. We just pray for her well-being as she gets through this. I have no idea how this occurred. So uh, just keep her in our prayers and us as we're taking care of her as well. These words came to mind as I was going over the, uh, the list of the last couple of days. As it keeps coming in, then it get, we get reminders, which I, I appreciate that. 1 Peter 4.11. 4, if anyone speaks... They should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ, and to him be the glory and the power forever and ever. The prayer altars are open if you'd like to come forward. If you'd like to pray for that young family that lost a, a young person this week, uh, just a couple nights ago, the altars are yours. Let us pray. Father, we just come to you this morning with uh, sometimes with saddened hearts sometimes when we hear the news, the tragic news, and we know that you have your hand in everything. And it's through your son, Jesus Christ, that we can simply be saved and have the, the peace that we have in your son and know that, Father, that when that time's for us, it's going to be good. Uh, it ends well. We are all worthy, Father, is the song this morning. We are all worthy. We just have to accept you, accept your Son into our hearts. Be with those on our prayer list this week and those that are hurting right now and those that are um, just trying to figure out what they're going to do next. What's the next move with medical care and what's the next move with a job? How am I going to get through this? How am I going to get by? Father, we just know that you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. We ask for forgiveness of our sins, Father. And for those uh, up here this morning at the altar, we lay a special hand on them this morning. Be with them, Father. We know their concerns. You know their concerns and their worries and their cares. And be with that family that's at least lost a child uh, just a few nights ago. How tragic that is, and sometimes it just seems so senseless. We just pray that they knew you, had a relationship with your son. Father, anoint the words of Pastor Gary this morning as he brings this message. And it's an exciting time this morning as we have Promotion Sunday, Father, where some are moving on from um, their high school years off to college and off to work and their careers, and some are coming into the, the different levels and meeting new friends and new teachers. Just be with them uh, as they come to continue and learn about you and your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this time you've given to us. It's all these things we ask and we pray in your heavenly name. All of God's children said, amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's now time for our tithes and offerings. If our ushers could come forward, please. And as they are coming and preparing, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time you've given to us to give back, to advance your kingdom. I pray that we can earn all that we can, that we can save all that we can, and we can give all that we can to help those in need and advance your kingdom. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. 
So announcement time, we have a big week. Actually, Pastor Gary and Darla have a big week. I think they're inviting close to 200 and some people to lunch and dinner, if I'm, if I'm looking at this right. Um, throughout lunch and supper this week, Monday the 26th through, uh, I believe it's through the August, Thursday the 29th, and it picks back up next week for three days. On your bulletin, it has uh, times you can come, but I think it also says you can come whenever you want. You can come to every meal. I think Pastor Gary said they've got all kinds of soup. You just need to bring a sandwich. So uh, if you're really hungry those uh, few times during the next couple of weeks, you're more welcome to come. But your um, the last name through the alphabet is on the back is the times that they've set aside for you specifically to kind of keep the groups a little bit smaller. So uh, looking forward to that and getting to know them a little bit more. And uh, I believe now it is time for Sunday School promotions. And Carrie, our uh, Sunday School coordinator is coming forward. Good morning. Um, we're excited today to promote 10 individuals into the next Sunday school class for the coming year. I'd like the teachers to come forward, Jessica, Norma, Jamie, who's filling in for the Richies today, and then Pastor Jeff and Carol, if they'd like to come forward. Do you have a, can I use a mic? We'll start with Jessica. She has a couple. Yes, he was here. Emmanuel? Yes, hi. You want to come on forward? I know he's a little shy, but I tell you what, he's been such a joy to have in my class. He's the first one to answer questions, or um, he's, uh, he's just been a, a joy, and I'm going to miss him a lot. Buddy. Going in the first grade. Where to put? And a smoothie. I'm going to start up on the thumb this way. Yeah. It's a few plums and a side smoothie. He goes, where's the drink? And Drew Leach. Is she here today? I don't see Miss Drew Drew. Well, Miss Drew Drew has also been such a delight to have in class, and um, she is very smart, and she's going to do great in first grade. Caleb Dunsmore. Miss Norma's going to miss these guys. Yeah, I will. This guy keeps me laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he always has Moving a great to the answer. Yes. And then, <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Cooper Allender. Hey, Coop. <laughs> I'm going to miss this guy. <laughs> Okay, come here. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Nick. There you go. <laughs> He's a great kid. And then Sarah Alusame. There she is. She always looks so pretty. She. She's an example of when they get taller than me, they go to the next. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> she always has a good answer. <laughs> I 
I'm Jamie Boisel. I only fill in for Mary and Doug maybe four or five Sundays the whole year. They're the true heroes. They just couldn't be here today. But they're graduating. The first one would be Hannah Baker. They're going to the youth group. She's not here today. Oh, okay. All There's right. that one. We have Piper Meesey. I know she was in Sunday school today. Piper, I think she has a future in being either a teacher or at least an organizer. She is wonderful. <laughs> These girls are the ones that help me know what's going on because usually when I get there, I don't. <laughs> Congratulations, Congratulations, Piper. We have Olivia. <laughs> Olivia Whip. Olivia helped me today run the class because she just asked, hey, it's my last Sunday. Can I teach? And I said, sure, we'll co-teach together. And Piper helped her as well. They did a phenomenal job. So congratulations, Olivia. All righty. First of all, Caleb Dunsmore. I got to show a hog here at the Green County Fair and some celebrity thing here a few weeks ago. And I came in fifth, and Caleb told me I deserved sixth. So I appreciate his honesty. He actually came out and watched me do that. So thanks, Caleb. I'll look forward to your youth days. All right. I know Miles is probably not here, is he, Mom? No, he's off to college doing his thing. So we have Miles Meesey that uh, moved on from our, uh, our youth group this year, and he is at Capitol playing football. And When he comes back, he's in my Sunday school class. Remind him. That's correct. <laughs> And I also have Reese Acuff and Tyler Rigsby, if you could come up here. Reese and Tyler have graduated. Is that correct? Did you get your actual diploma and everything? <laughs> okay. I think you had, like, some cords and stuff, too, didn't you? I didn't. You didn't. Uh, okay. Here you go, Reese. And these fellows, you get a – I'll let Carrie give those to you. There you go. So. Okay. Thank you, guys, and you are also more than welcome when you come back to be in with uh, Carrie's classroom, and enjoy, enjoy life now. Thank you very much. Morning. We're glad that you're here. We're going to have the kids come down uh, for prayer time. If you're visiting with us and your kids would like to participate downstairs with all of us, they are welcome. Just make sure that you ask an usher, or if you're not sure where to go, make sure that you ask for those directions um, so that you can pick up your child afterwards. Have you noticed some of them are a little slower? It's been a long week of school, right? So come on down, and we'll make sure that um, parents, you get to the right spot so that these kids can have a great time today. Okay, let's pray together. Jesus, this is the day that you have made, and we rejoice in that. We thank you for these kids, and I know that they now are all back to school, and I thank you for helping them through the first week of maybe some anxious times and um, being excited or maybe all at once, and so we thank you for helping them through this week. I pray that um, the things that they hear today, the things that they see would help them to understand who you are a little bit better. I pray that they would know who you are in a closer way so that they can share that with those around them this week. We know that they are a blessing and we are very grateful for them. I just pray that you would be with all of us, that we would be attentive to your word, to what you have for us, so that we may leave this place knowing you better. We ask all this in your name, amen. I love the fact that you pray with your kids before they go to children's church. It's uh, basically saying, <clears throat> we know God's going to take care of you. And we trust that he'll teach you something that's going to help you. Well, good morning, everyone. Yeah, we've invited you to lunch or dinner. Come at your own risk. Darla's making the soup. We called Lowe's and they're gonna help her turn on the stove. I have no idea what she's making. I know this, if you really wanna eat, bring a sandwich. 
we'll have soup. I think she's going to do, uh, we're going to do some veggies, crackers, cheese. I'm baking cookies. Yeah. So um, come. Uh, it would help us to spread it out over the seven days, either lunch or dinner. Come what's most, most convenient for you. But if you can't come in your evening uh, alphabet, your alphabet time, come on another day. Just, we just want to meet you and get to know you. And I think we explained, Darla travels for our company. She's out just about every weekend. And so we thought, if, but she's here during the week, and that's an excellent chance for you to meet her and get to know me. She's the extrovert. I'm the introvert. Uh, you'll pry me out of the corner, and I'll talk to you probably. But just, we'd just like to get to know you. And if you could take time in the next two weeks to drop by either at lunch or, di or evening, we'd love it. We'd just love it. I promise that we'll be there. Do you hate it when people break their promises? Is, is there anything worse than someone giving you their word and then, and then they don't follow up on it? They, they break their promise. Uh, God does promises. Many of us have lived our life on God's promises. We've trusted him since we were as little as those kids. And we learned those promises way back then. And God has made some incredible promises to his people. We're going to look at one this morning. Genesis chapter 15. Would you stand please for the reading of God's word? Genesis chapter 15, starting with verse 1. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, this man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. And then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord, and the people say, thanks be to God. You may be seated. And I realize I forgot my water, and sometimes I need it to get through a sermon. So that's not the only promise he made. I mean, he, did, he actually said it again in Genesis chapter 17. It's, a, it's not just a promise, it's a covenant promise. A covenant promise is... When God makes it, you might not act like you received it. You might even do things that, that are against what God would want for you. But God keeps his promise to you. And, and so this is a covenant promise to Abraham that you will have descendants. And that was important in, in, the, in the day of Abraham because... It, you didn't have any worth at all if, one, you didn't have land, and, and two, if you didn't have kids. Because you had to have kids to inherit your, your wealth, your, your land. And, and so Abraham is being very clear with God. He's saying, you know, you, you say you're blessing me. You say that uh, I'm gonna, things are going to work out for me. But let me tell you this, I've got the land, but I don't have anybody to inherit the land. I have no descendants. It's going to go to a servant. And that was important. I mean, that was incredibly important. So God makes this promise. Not only will you have a son, you will have descendants more than the stars. 
That's pretty cool. Kids are important. We um, have this fascination with parents that don't treat their kids right. Remember the story of Casey Anthony? That captured the imagination, the fascination of, of a whole country wondering if she actually could have killed her young daughter. Do you remember John Benet Ramsey? That happened over 20 years ago. And yet still, there's, there's people who wonder, did, what role did the parents play in that, that murder? If, if anything, th that whole idea of how, how could it be that someone would kill their child? And yet, listen to what God tells Abraham to do. After the covenant promise, Genesis chapter 20 through 2, verses 1 and 2. Abraham, God says, here I am, Abraham replies. God then says, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Now catch this. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. What in the world is God thinking? Promise him he will have descendants. Promise a covenant promise that the descendants will be like more than stars and yet this son that was an answer to God's promise at 100 years old, he has this son and now God says, sacrifice him as a burnt offering on the mountain I will tell you about. Oh, that's hard to get your, wrap your mind around. We, uh, Darla and I saw a movie just last year. Um, the, the, it's called The Sound of Freedom. Maybe some of you saw it. Oh, a gripping film about sex trafficking. Like children being trapped, kidnapped, uh, taken away, and, 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 then, and then basically put in slavery. And, and, the, and the problem is, as I was watching that movie, I'm thinking, oh, that's really bad, third world country. And then at the end of the movie, they say, it's not just a third world country problem. Hey, we had almost 5,000 young people kidnapped last year. And I'm thinking, how, how could a parent allow, how could a parent even see that? How could a parent live with that kind of thing happening to your family? Every parent here gets it. Every parent here understands. You, you, you do everything you can to protect your children. And yet, here's God saying, take this son that I promised you that you love. Take him to the mountain and kill him. Hard to understand, hard to figure out. So Abraham saddles up a donkey, cuts some wood, gathers some servants, and gets Isaac, and they head out on the three-day journey to Mount Moriah. By the way, Three-day journey is, is um, an interesting trip. For the Hebrews, a three-day journey is the journey to death. Three days was always the, the symbol of, of dying. Jonah and the whale. 
three days. Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. It all just kind of, so whatever that journey was like, the three-day journey to Moriah was the, was the death march. And you know Isaac is going, Dad, I, I, I get it. You're, you, <laughs> Dad, you got the donkey, you cut the wood, you got your fire, you got, you got everything you need, but you don't, <laughs> Dad, you forgot the sacrifice. Dad, I know there's some people, there's some, you've got a younger brother that's caused you problems all your life. And you're going, well, maybe God has a point here. I had a parent come up to me afterwards and say, well, this is what I know. I know Isaac wasn't a teenager because if Isaac had been a teenager, it would have been hard for me not to just obey God's command. I don't know. The Canaanite culture certainly understood sacrifices. They, they, they often would give a sacrifice. Uh, of, if you had a good crop, you'd give, you'd give the best of that crop first right off the top to God as a sacrifice. If you had a, a, a great herd, you'd, give, you'd sacrifice a, 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 a cow or a, a bull or something to God, the, usually the very best. They, they understood sacrifices. The, the problem is the, what God is asking here. God commands, it is baffling in, in the light of the covenant promise, your descendants will be like the stars in the heavens. A guy with Alzheimer's. A, a God who could often rescue people from their obstacles. In the case of Abraham, he rescued Sarah from Pharaoh. He, he, he settled land problems for Lot, and he, and he got Lot out of Sodom. God could solve problems and remove obstacles, but what do you do when God is the obstacle? Listen, as humans, we give to get. And then we've always had. Abraham left Aaron to, to get to Canaan. Moses left Egypt to get to the promised land. Disciples left their boats in order to claim a better life and to eventually, for what they were hoping, overthrowing the Roman Empire. Blind men that Jesus healed left their place to, to have a better life and to be healed. We do things to feel better, and we leave things to, to get better. But in this account, Abraham is sacrificing Isaac and getting nothing better in return. So what was God's purpose? Strengthen Abraham's faith? Give Isaac an update and personal view of God's relationship with Abraham? Let the world see why God trusted Abraham? Give an early picture of the pain of a father sacrificing a son? Or demonstrate how much God hates human sacrifice? What, what was God's purpose in this? And I think I found the answer. Genesis chapter 22, verse 12. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. It isn't the impending death of Isaac that's the obstacle. 
It's the prospect that Abraham and his descendants may be more attached to the promised blessing and the promised benefits than they are to God. Folks, that was so good, I'm going to say it again. It isn't the impending death of Isaac that's the obstacle. It's the prospect that Abraham and his descendants may be more attached to the promised blessing and the promised benefits than they are to God. And there's a difference. This is not a test to see if we love our children. This is a test of what motivates us to live for God. Is it him we serve? Or are we in it for the benefits he provides and the hope he offers? Is our devotion motivated by a personal gain? Or is it really our love for him? You see, I, I think I know people who have basically put their faith in those things that they have gotten or will get. And, and there's nothing wrong with the hope of salvation. There, there's nothing wrong with the benefits of following Jesus. We've all enjoyed those kinds of things. The, the problem might be that sometimes those, those promises, th those benefits become the object of our living to, to the point where we start defining what those promises should look like and what those benefits should be and, and the way they play out in our life to the point where we start getting interested in the peripheral things of following Jesus and then when some of those things get messed up or something happens that we really didn't plan on or want, it really messes up our faith. My first wife and I, we used to do a lot of marriage and family enrichment retreats. And we were uh, on our way to Florida to do one there and we decided we'll go down a day early and go to Disney World to spend a day at Disney World. We went to uh, uh, Hollywood Studios, that, that part of Disney World. Some of you have been there. And um, Carol wasn't a, a, a big ride rider, and, and I'm kind of a roller coaster person, and there is, a, there is this a roller coaster uh, um, I forget, rocking something, rocking, what is it called? The rock and roller coaster. I know, it, it's, um, it's based on the music of Aerosmith. And, uh, and I knew about it, and I wanted to ride it, but it was, uh, the line was so long, and we, you know, there were other things we wanted to see and do, and, uh, and so Carol was easily going, well, that's not, but, Later in the day, the line went down. So I, I talked her into getting into the line. And, she, and she's going, well, uh, what's this ride like? <clears throat> the rock and roller coaster, yeah, it's called the rock and roller coaster, goes from zero to 60 miles an hour in 2.8 seconds. When you take off, you experience 4.5 Gs. That is greater than the shuttle takeoff that astronauts go through. So she's saying, what is this ride like? And I go, well, it's a, it's a musical ride. <laughs> Come on, go with me on this. I'd, and she goes, oh, you mean like a, it's a small world? <laughs> I go, yeah. <laughs> now, I, I won't go to hell for saying that, will I? I mean, I, I kind of told her mostly the truth. I mean, that was... 
<laughs> so she got on this ride. They, they take a picture of you when you take off. <laughs> And I, I wish I had bought the picture because there's this picture of my wife looking at me like, you're a dead man, kind of a. <laughs> the rock and roller coaster, I, I don't know how long it is. It's, I'm sure it seemed like an eternity for Carol. But, I mean, it does loops and twists, and it's all in the dark as Aerosmith music is, is playing, and, and, it's, and you know, lights flashing, and, and it's going every which way, and it knocks you back and forth, and, 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 uh, and uh, it, it, was, it was a great ride, great ride. <laughs> there's another ride at Disney World, and that is when you get there, you park your car, there's a tram that picks you up and will take you from the parking lot, actually, to the entrance to the park. There are some people, that's the only ride they do. I mean, for them, uh, here's, here's the deal. I want to get from point A to point B safely. That's it. That's all I want. That's all I need to do. And, and then that's it for me. And I'm saying, okay, I, got, I don't have a problem with that. But if you really want to experience a ride, you got to get on the rock and roller coaster. I think there are some people walking through their life who call themselves followers of Jesus. And for them, life is this. Get me from here to there. That's all I want. Don't mess with it. Don't do anything weird. Don't throw me off, and don't be messing with my promises and my benefits that God gave me. But life isn't like that, and you know it and I know it. Life is a lot like the rock and roller coaster with things blaring and things happening and twists and turns that you weren't expecting because it's all in the dark and you can't see what's coming up next and you don't know. And, and, you're, and sometimes if you would take a picture of you, you'd be looking like, I don't know. But it happens. And you know it happens. And for those who say, you know what? I know what God promised, but he never told me exactly how it all is going to come out, except this. We're going to get there, and he's with me. I choose to trust the God who gave me the promise even more than I trust the promise. You hear what I'm saying? I choose to trust the God who provides the benefits more than I trust the benefits. Because if I'm just trusting benefits, if I'm just trusting promises, I have a, a human tendency to interpret benefits and promises the way I want to interpret them. And, and then sometimes it doesn't turn out the way I thought it should. And God is saying to me, trust me and me alone. I uh, stumbled on a song that I heard Andre Crouch sing years ago. And as I looked at the scripture and, and finally what it, what it, it kind of opened my, uh, my mind to I realized that's what Andre was singing about. He was basically saying that sometimes a life isn't what I hoped it would be. Sometimes uh, there are things that look like God just not listening anymore. And here's what I do know. Right now, God is everything to me. I choose to trust him in the present. The future will take care of itself. God is 
God. So I asked Rick to learn the song. And I want you to hear the words. I want you to think about what Abraham had to go through to be taught this very important lesson about how God works. Sometimes it looks like he broke his promise. Sometimes it looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. Sometimes that's because we chose to take control of the promise, take control of the benefits, when we really just need to trust God and let him be God. Hey, listen to this song. You may ask me why I serve the Lord. Is it just for heaven's gain? Or to walk those mighty streets of gold? To hear the angels sing? And is it just to drink from the fountain? Never shall run dry but just to live forever and ever in that sweet old by and by. But if heaven was never promised to me. God's promise to live eternally it's been worth just having the Lord in my life living in a world of darkness he came along and brought me the light if there were never never in the streets of gold neither in land dries all my tears it's been worth just having the Lord in my life living in a world of darkness you came along and brought me the light living in a world of darkness you came along and brought me the light living in a world of darkness you came along and brought me the light. Nothing wrong with the promise. Nothing wrong with the hope of heaven. Nothing wrong. But it's trusting God today with your life and knowing that he is worthy of your trust knowing that he's worthy of your devotion and allowing him just to take the todays one day at a time. Heavenly Father, thank you because you're a God who allows us to live our lives in the moment and forgive us for the times when we get ahead of the game and, and we start taking a hold of what we are convinced you should be doing and we start molding our lives around what we want and what we think we need. Thank you because when we trust you then in our darkness you reveal the light and you show us the way one day at a time. 
Thank you for the journey that got us here. Thank you for your presence that we feel even in this place right now. And, and thank you in advance for all that you're going to do. Where we give you the honor and the glory and the praise. And all God's people said, amen. Stand with me, please. And receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Hope to see some of you at lunch or supper. Amen. <laughs>